The rigid beam rests in a horizontal position on two aluminum cylinders, having the unloaded length shown. So these lengths are before applying the load. If each cylinder has a diameter of 30 millimeter, determine the placement X of the applied AD clonioidon loads so that the beam remains horizontal after applying the load. And the second part, what is the new diameter of cylinder A after load is applied? So we want to determine where would be the appropriate position of that AD clonioidon if we want to have that beam horizontal after applying the load. The condition that we need to satisfy is delta A should be equal to delta B, and I will start with freeway diagram. Freeway diagram means I need to make that element free. How many restraints do we have here? Two, A and B. So we remove and put unknown forces there, and I will use some of the forces in y direction should be zero. Some of the forces, we have three forces in the top element. Fa plus Fb is equal to AD clonioidon. There is another equation, which is the moment, which at this time, we can't use that because we are looking for x. We will use the moment equation later on. All right, now let me write down <coughs> deformation in cylinders A and B as a function of force. Let's do that for A and B separately. Delta A is FA, the force in cylinder A, times 220, which is the length of cylinder A, divided by EA. Similar to that, we can write down equation of deformation in uh, cylinder B. Force in element B times the length, which is 210, divided by EA. That is total deformation in cylinder B. Now, let's apply the compatibility condition. We want to have the same displacement in these two cylinders. Delta A is equal to delta B. Let's plug the values that we got in the previous step. FA times 220 divided by EA should be equal to FB times 210 divided by EA. EA cancels from both sides, and I get FA equal to 210 divided by 220 times FB. I will call this equation as equation number 2, and I will combine that with equation number 1 that I got before in step number 1. Now I can solve it for FA and B, and if I do that, that gives me FB equal to 40.93 clonioidon and FA equal to 39.07 clonioidon. So we have determined the force in each of these two cylinders. And in the very last step, we can determine where should be the position of that adiclonioidal force to have FB and FA as required. To determine that, we use some of the moments about any point, say A. So some of the moments about A should be zero. Let's write down the moments. FB times 3, that is the distance of point B to A, minus AD clonioidon times X, which is the arm of AD clonioidon from point A, should be 0. And from this equation, I can determine X. That would be 3 times FB divided by AD. And if I plug the value of a FB in that equation, that gives me 1.535 meter.